Nicole. Great to see you. When we last talk about financial numbers in February, you referred to a very challenging previous year, but you also said you were cautiously optimistic looking into, into this year. Now we published the Q1 numbers uh, today. So what is your perspective now? Yeah, we're still uh, cautiously optimistic, Kai. Looking at our Q1 numbers, um, yeah, we had a very good start of the year, especially uh, the pickup in profitability is impressive. So we ended um, at an EBITDA margin level of 17.1%, which is uh, substantially up from the 13.9% that we achieved in the first quarter last year. Definitely. So, and what do you see as the key reasons behind this step up? Yeah, first, I like to recognize all the hard work that has been done to deliver the cost uh, performance um, improvement programs. Uh, we had a total target here of 175 million Swiss francs, and we have now delivered um, 146 million Swiss francs against that program. So more than 80 percent of the targeted savings uh, has been delivered, which has not been easy. Um, secondly, margin management. Um, it is also impressive to see how well we are able to hold on to our pricing in an environment where raw materials are significantly down. So just the headline numbers, our pricing in the first quarter was down 5% in local currency, but our raw materials were actually down double digits. So also uh, from margin management, we have been able to improve our margins. And that's a big thank you to all of the frontline salespeople. So this was achieved by our own efforts, obviously. Great job. Uh, now talking about the external factors, uh, the demand side. Uh, in other words, we're talking about top line. Let's start with the regions, Conrad, because the picture is a bit mixed, uh, thinking about the various regions that Clarence is operating in. Uh, how do you assess the performance uh, region-wise? Yeah, I think you said it well, Kai. It is a mixed picture by region. So we are seeing clearly the recovery taking place in the Americas. We're seeing it clearly taking place in China. So the Americas for us up 4% in organic local currency uh, growth in the first quarter. China up 5% in local currency organic growth. Where we still do not see the pickup yet is in Europe, where our first quarter revenue was actually down 13% um, organic in local currency. Uh, roughly half of that pricing, roughly half of that volumes. We see in Europe a recovery of the consumer markets, but in the industrial markets, we really need to see a pickup in industrial production levels in Europe to really see the business recover. Uh, let's stick maybe to the top line, uh, more from a view perspective. Each business unit has its own challenges. Do you also see like a mixed picture looking at the BU performance? Yeah, we see we see a mixed picture, but it's also in line with what we previously guided for and what we expected. So in care chemicals, we are seeing a pickup. Uh, overall volumes up uh, 2% in care chemicals. Uh, very much helped by uh, a nice pickup that we see in personal care and home care. Not only a pickup year on year, but also a strong sequential pickup from the fourth uh, quarter. Um, we also, I also like to note our results in mining, where we clearly are outgrowing the markets and have gained some share in regions like Latin America. Um, Catalyst down 2% in volumes from prior year. Um, but please remember, we guided for mid-single digit down uh, for the year on revenue in Catalyst because last year, most of our customers were running at relatively low operating rates, which then results in prolonged refill cycles for that business. So with the minus 2%, we were actually quite pleased. But I will point out that uh, the order book uh, moving forward for Catalyst still rather weak. The real Pick up for Catalyst, we expect next year. Finally, additives and adsorbents. In adsorbents, we saw some weakness um, in Asia, a weaker crop for palm oil uh, due to the El Nino effects. Palm oil, uh, as you know, a critical outlet uh, where we use our purification um, adsorbents to basically purify the, the palm oil for edible oil applica applications. Um, we also saw some weakness in the Americas. Uh, we lost um, quite a large sales contract in our adsorbents business where we 
basically didn't like the margins that we were selling at. Um, and now that frees up some plant capacity moving forward, we can then bring in some more profitable business there. So we're, yeah, we're, we don't regret it, um, but we now need to get, get some more profitable business in that plant. Um, finally, on additives, um, we, we, we didn't see the recovery yet, but keep in mind that last year we still had a very strong Q1 in additives. Uh, sequentially, we are seeing a pickup, though, in additives from the fourth quarter. So thanks for your comments on the financial performance. Uh, now, we're not reporting the non-financial KPI in Q1. Nevertheless, Conrad, is there anything that stands out if you think about our non-financial performance in Q1? Yeah, we talked about our uh, employee engagement uh, in our last call. We talked about our customer engagement, our customer satisfaction engagement scores both up uh, significantly. We also talked about safety, where we said Clarion last year has achieved top quartile safety performance. I'm very pleased that in March we are celebrating the first month ever in the company without any injury. This means uh, a total of um, more than 2 million hours worked in the company without an injury. No injury at uh, none of our 73 sites globally, none of our laboratories, none of our offices, none of our warehouses. This is obviously uh, something really to celebrate. Definitely a great success uh, for all of us as employees here. And now it seems overall you are very satisfied with the first quarter. Do you also feel that this is perceived by others in the same manner? Yeah, we talked about our employees. We talked about our customers. Um, I can also point out our investors. I was very pleased to see also our share price um, outperforming the MSCI Chemicals Europe Index uh, in the recent months. So it is picked up by some of our investors as well, Kai. So that's a promising start into the year. Now let's maybe talk about the future a little bit, Konrad. Uh, starting with the big picture. So how do you see markets developing in the coming months? Yeah, if you look at uh, markets developing in the coming months, an interesting metric to look at is the PMI Industrials Index, the Purchase Manager uh, Index, but focused on the industrial segment. What you see is um, in America, as well as uh, in China, you see this, um, this metric above 50 now, which indicates an increased activity in industrial production. Um, we see that also in our own numbers. Um, if you then move to Europe, unfortunately, uh, the PMI uh, industrial index in the first quarter was still only at 46, which indicates a contraction. And I believe the latest number in April may even be down to 45. So for Europe, um, the recovery is, um, is not there yet. Um, hopefully, the lower interest rates, the, 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 the inflation coming down will help. But for Europe really to recover, we need to see a big pickup in industrial production again. Yeah, how does that translate into end consumer markets that are relevant for us? So namely, uh, let's say electric vehicles, electronic goods, smartphones, computers. Is, is that also a market or are these markets where you see signs of recovery? Yeah, if you look at, 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 at specifically some of these metrics, what is important to note is the overall uh, GDP will slow down this year. That is also what the, the central banks are targeting. The, the, the composition of GDP is changing. So there is a shift back from services GDP to um, industrial GDP. And what that needs is demand for durable goods. And items like you just mentioned, consumer electronics, uh, appliances, furniture, you are seeing a, a level of recovery in these markets. Cell phone production um, in the first quarter was up 3 4%. Uh, last year, it was negative. Um, computers, laptops, you see a slight recovery uh, in these markets. Um, and hopefully, um, yeah, with lower interest rates, um, at some point, you see that pick up even stronger. Hmm. And taking this into account, Bernard, how confident are you then for the 2024 guidance? Yeah, we're very confident, Kai, with our EBITDA margin guide, um, where we set 15% EBITDA margins for the year, um, and then excluding uh, the biofuels effects, it's underlying 16%. So um, we're very confident there. 
As far as revenue, uh, we still think low single digits uh, is um, is very realistic. So um, yeah, we, we're very we basically confirm our guidance. So in other words, it means you are still cautiously optimistic for the year. Yeah, we're cautiously optimistic with some level of growth returning to our markets. That sounds good. Thanks a lot, Conrad, for your time. Uh, all the best, lots of success, and we will talk again soon. Thank you, Kai. Thank you.